Hello, everyone. This is Mr. Tam with another episode of Science and Technology to keep you guys in the loop during this time of great uncertainty. So what I thought I'd do today is go over a little bit of review since uh, there's, certain amount of, there's a certain amount of material we haven't gone through in a while. So I'd like to take this opportunity, I think, we're going to go through something we call dynamic, dynamic electricity review. Now, oops, review, not spelled that way. So we have a couple of equations that I'd like to go through with you guys. First and foremost is something we call Ohm's law. And Ohm's law basically describes a relationship between voltage, resistance, and current intensity. And the equation looks something like this. V is equal to R times I, where V is the voltage measured in volts. We can also call it the potential difference. R, which is something we call resistance, it measures how well a component um, resists the electrons going through it. And current intensity is measuring the speed or the flow of the current that's passing through the circuit. So just to give you guys a little rundown here, I'm going to list on the side here all the units. So V is measured in volts. R is measured in something we call ohms. And I is measured in something we call amps. I'm going to put in brackets the lettering for each one. Ohms is a omega and amps is a capital A. So there's the formula. It's nice and simple. The dot, of course, represents a multiplication. So let's say I were to give you an example here where you are given the current of 0 0.8 amps and a resistance of 24 ohms. Of course, whenever you're doing an exam, you're always going to be missing one of those three letters. And it's a very simple solve. I just have to plug this into the equation. V is the unknown. R is 24 ohms. And I is eight or is, oops, 0 0.8 amps. So when I multiply everything out here, it's a nice and simple number. It's 19.2, and don't forget units, of course, volts. Now say I listed out for you a second example here, where now I'm given the voltage to be 30 and my resistance to be 10 ohms. And of course, because you're always missing one of the three letters, I is unknown. V is equal to R times I. V is 30 volts. R is 10 ohms. And I is my unknown. I divide, of course, both sides by 10 so that I can isolate I. I is going to be left over. And I'm going to be left with the number 3. And current is, of course, always measured in amps. So that does it for Ohm's law. Now, moving past this, we now go on to something called power. Now power is measuring the amount of joules something uses every second. So just to list it out for you guys, power has three components to it. The formula is as follows. P is equal to V times I. Now, power is measured in watts. So every time you change a light bulb, you got to think of power. So something that, let's say, 100 watts will be brighter in a room, but at the same time will use more energy. And that is a big W, a capital W. As we said earlier, voltage is measured in volts. And of course, the advantage is that they're both the same letter. And current is measured in amps. So there's two out of those three that we've already seen before. So let's say I were to give you an example here where the voltage is 15 volts and the current is two amps. And this is just simply to have you guys practice to make sure that you know how to plug it into the equation properly. So V and I are given. P is equal to 15 volts times 2 amps. 
n, you end up with a number of 30. And in this case, it's watts because it is a unit of power. If you don't, if you forget to actually put the unit in, they may deduct marks for forgetting your units. It's very important to put that in. So let's change it up a little bit. What if I were to give you power in something called kilowatts? Now remember, kilo, like every other metric prefix, can be converted to the unit by moving the appropriate number of steps. So in this case, I want it in watts. So how does one go from kilos to watts? Well, I want to describe to you guys a little scale that I always talk to my students about, where King Henry died and mother didn't care much. Okay, that M right here can be any unit that you're dealing with. In this case, we're dealing with watts. It could be King Henry died, Walter didn't care much. Uh, it could be in liters, King Henry died, Larry didn't care much. Uh, it could be in amps. Let's say you're dealing with milliamps. The King Henry died, and Andre didn't care much. So the idea is that it's a nice, easy scale to uh, use when you're converting from one to the other. So let's say you are the king or queen of the hill. You want to go keep your minions at bay. You're at the top of the hill. Mr. Tam is trying to climb the hill to try to conquer this hill. Well, you're not going to let him because you're going to throw a snowball down at him. I know we're actually into spring now, but... Uh, I figure if you throw a snowball at him, this snowball is going to get bigger and bigger as it rolls down the hill, therefore keeping him at bay. So how in math do we make a number bigger? Well, the operation involved is a multiplication. And for every step you take, you multiply it by 10. So the nice thing is, since we're dealing with kilowatts in this case, and we want to get to watts, it is essentially one, two, three steps we're taking. So again, it's I've always put the one, one, two, three, zero. So you're multiplying by a thousand. So your power ends up being 1200 watts. Nice and easy. So I'll give you a number, another number here that the voltage is unknown. And you of course have a current at 10 amps, just to make our calculations nice and easy. So back to our formula, P is equal to V times I, power is 1200, voltage is unknown, and my current is 10. So if I divide both sides by 10, what magically happens is the two zeros get knocked away and you get 120 volts, which is basically our standard for our plugs. So that does it for equation number two. You guys are doing great here, okay? We're gonna move on to, in my opinion, the toughest one of all. The one formula that we need to be able to calculate energy. So let's clear this up. Actually, you know what? Rather than clear everything, I think I'm gonna leave King Henry where he is. And I'm just going to erase the relationship of power. I'm going to erase all these calculations that we have here. It takes a bit of time, guys. It doesn't work as well as a smart board, I admit, but it's okay. We're not really pressed to go anywhere, given that we should be staying home, unless you guys absolutely have to go out. So let's do the next problem here, where I'm dealing with energy. Now, energy does come in two varieties. Okay, you either measure it in joules or something we call kilowatt hour. And I will go through, of course, both varieties with you. Now, the formula that you're dealing with is E is equal to P times delta T. Okay, now this triangle doesn't mean anything when it comes to the actual calculations. It just means that you have a change in time. It means that let's say I started at 10 o'clock and I finished my experiment at 11 o'clock. The change or the delta time is one hour because that's 10 or 11 minus the 10. So it means it's just the difference between what your final is and what your initial is. So don't pay too much attention to that. It is part of the formula though. Okay. So let's start with variety number one. 
So if I, let's say, for example, say, I want you to determine the amount of energy used, this is my unknown. If I have an appliance that uses 60 watts of energy, or of power, sorry, uh, this is like a standard light bulb that you would find in any small room, and uh, you use it for a duration of three minutes. So what's very important about this particular equation is that the time can never, ever, ever be in minutes or hours it actually, or days or whatever. If you're dealing with watts, the time must be in seconds. So to convert minutes to seconds, one has to say that it is indeed 60 seconds per minute. And what happens is these two units cancel out. You're essentially taking three and multiplying it by 60 to give you a grand old total of 180 seconds. And once you have to have that, of course, it becomes very simple, where E is essentially just equal to P times delta T. The P is 60 watts. The time that has passed is 180 seconds, which leads me to a final number of 10,800 with a capital J at the end. So this is the variety that involves joules. So why another variety? Well, let's say I, I, um, I'm going to go through another example with you here quickly, where I'm going to give you my appliance uh, that ends up using, rather than 660 watts, it uses, let's say, 6,000 watts. And that I'd rather than use it for just a mere three minutes, I go ahead and use it for, let's say, 150 minutes. So you're saying to yourself, sir, uh, why does it feel like it's going to get real big real fast? Because it is. It actually is going to get very big very quickly. So again, we do the same type of calculation. And this, in reality, will give us 9,000 seconds. And when you plug it into your formula, of course, you're like, ah, oh, sir, that just looks absolutely gigantic, because it is. Power is 6,000 watts. It's the correct unit, 9,000 seconds. So essentially, you ask yourself what 6 times uh, 9 is, which gives you a 54. And then you add the remaining zero. So you're like, goodness gracious, that's 54, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 joules. So 54 million joules seems like a bit of a high number to get on your hydroelectricity bill. Because if I saw that in my bill, I would freak out automatically. So how do we reduce that number to make it seem more plausible? Okay. Um, well, we're going to convert some things. Okay. So we're going to keep the same numbers, except we're going to convert them so that they, are end up, they end up being smaller. So let me just erase this really quickly for a second here. And I'm going to rather deal with it in minutes. I'm going to deal with it in hours. So we're going the other way. So you essentially have to divide this by 60 and you end up with 2.5 hours. And rather than have this big number, we're actually going to have this number in kilowatts. So to go from watts, which we discussed earlier, to kilowatts, you're again taking three steps. That's a magic number. Three steps means you're going up the hill, therefore dividing, and you're going to divide by 1,000, which gives you six kilowatts. Wow, sir, that's uh, quite amazing. So I drastically reduce my numbers. So when I go to calculate the amount of energy I use, I simply put that into the same formula where power is equal, E is equal to P times T, and I end up with six kilowatts as my power, and my time is two and a half hours which leads me to six times 2.5, which is 15. Then what's the unit? Is it joules? It can't be because we already changed the original units from watts to kilowatts and from minutes to hours. So let's not get too creative about it, guys. You literally have the units in front of you. You have KW for uh, watts and you have hours for your time. So that means you just combine them together to give you KWH. I like to write the dot to remind myself that it is not per hour, 
but rather it is a multiplication. Some people wish to write it like 15 kWh. Because between this number and 54 million, I mean, I would honestly rather write 15 kilowatt hour. So in, an, in essence, what I'm trying to tell you guys is, um, it's like me saying, I'm gonna drive from Montreal to Toronto, uh, and I drove, I'm gonna drive, you know, 500,000 meters, which just sound, sounds absolutely ludicrous. What's more reasonable is to say that I drove 500 kilometers. That's why we actually convert from joules to kilowatt hours. So I'm really hoping that this video, little video helped you guys out. It's a good review. Um, keep up the great work, guys. We can all make it through together. And um, I will see you in the next episode. Take care. Bye.